Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast, Doing Business in Bentonville. My name is Andy Wilson. I'm the executive director. And wow, what a show we have today. Denise Thomas, welcome. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. I'm really excited about being here, and I appreciate the opportunity to share things with you about the World Trade Center. Well, I will tell you, I'm, I'm, I am so ready for this. I want, I want us to share with our listeners and viewers today what's going on in this phenomenal state of Arkansas and the world, and you are very much involved, entrenched in all of that. Yeah, I'm telling you, you got to hold on. This is going to be awesome today. But before we get into all this stuff, we have to like introduce you because you are just a phenomenal individual. You have done so many things in your career. I pass even crossed at Walmart back mm-hmm. in the day. Yes. <laughs> so, so I mean, you have done so much and you're doing so much. So let's start and let's introduce you and and you're the chief executive of the World Trade Center. And so why don't you sort of build it out from there, what you've done, and then let's get into what you're currently doing in this phenomenal state. Well, it's really a very interesting story. I fell into economic development by accident. It was not a plan. Everybody asked me, how did you career path? How did you plan for your career? How did you build the momentum to do what you do? And I have to be honest, it was completely an accident. I fell into something and I happened to be good at it and I liked it. (laughs) And it was in Jacksonville, Florida. My degree is actually in fashion. So my whole world was around fashion. And I always say, if you give me a pair of scissors and a needle and thread, I can make pretty much anything out of anything. It doesn't matter what it is, whether it's paper or a piece of fabric. It's it's just I can create something from nothing and Mm -hmm. enjoy doing it. And I like sitting in the corner by myself doing that. I always have. And I ended up working for the Small Business Center in Jacksonville, Florida, for the Jacksonville Chamber. And it was just one of those job, job situations where I was in the right place at the right time. An opening came available to run the facility. Mm -hmm. And I interviewed with um, Bob and Wally Lee at the time at the chamber and got the job and did that for a few years and grew that program from a 4,000 square foot facility to a 9,000 square foot facility. And in Jacksonville, everybody has their buckets and they don't play well together at that time. (laughs) It's changed since then. Right, Right. And I was able to help facilitate getting all of these different organizations. We had procurement and technical assistance. We had the SBA. We had... Um, several of the chambers, there were different types of chambers throughout the state and the region. And we all were ended up being housed in one facility to support small business development. Mm -hmm. And we grew that program from about a thousand people a year to 6,000 people a year. And it was wonderful because it was a one-stop shop for small business. So everybody had a rotation Mm -hmm. schedule. Then from there, I ended up here in Northwest Arkansas. My mother was a dean of the libraries, Carolyn Allen, at the time, mm-hmm. and we followed her. And my husband and I came here with no jobs, mm-hmm. no prospects of anything. We just quit our jobs, sold our house, and just said, let's just go live. Yeah. And we traveled for four and a half months. And I ended up at Walmart because I had a, my mom had a friend who was a recruiter. Mm-hmm. And um, she said, hey, you know, there's mm-hmm. opportunities here, so why don't you look? And I looked and I interviewed and I ended up working for pharmacy and I was a pharmacy mm-hmm. recruiter. Mm-hmm. I did that for about four years, three, three, mm-hmm. three and a half years. And then I ended up being a recruiter for HR, corporate HR. And I did that for almost two. Mm. And again, just me with my personality networked, networked and ended up here at the World Trade Center. And that's kind of how I've landed. And I've been with the World Trade Center now for 16 years. You know, that's an amazing story. And I want to go back, first of all, uh, we love Florida, but we're glad you're here. Okay, in I Arkansas. Love being here. So, this is all right. <laughs> so, to all our uh, Florida viewers, we do, but we're glad she's here. Uh, she's doing some great things in our state now. Um, now, you know, you have. Uh, I was reviewing your career, sixteen plus years. Yeah. At the Trade Center, yeah. and now, how long have you been the chief executive? Um, I figured out two two years and a few months, like yeah, not right. quite two and a half, but two years and a few months. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Well, congratulations on your advancement at the World Trade Center. And now you mentioned your mom. Let's go back. You know, we all we moms. We have to talk our bottom moms, right? So, uh, yeah, okay. So your mom, I'm sure, had a lot of influence uh, in your life. Uh, my I- mom and family are. I had the 
privilege of having an amazing, amazing, mm-hmm. amazing family That's that was awesome. like totally in my corner mm-hmm. and super supportive. Mm-hmm. And my mom being most of all, mm-hmm. um, she has been um, my rock and probably Good. I would call her my very best friend, mm-hmm. her and my husband. It's like the trifecta of us. We plan right. everything. We vacation together. We right. lived together up until a few years ago when my mom moved back to Alabama. But yeah. she was a dean of the libraries here at the university and just a great mentor and mm. friend. And, I, you know, I can't not speak about some of the other women that are here in Northwest Arkansas mm-hmm. that have been just jewels and have helped me mm-hmm. make better choices, um, mm-hmm. live my best possible life and mm-hmm. excel as a human being mm-hmm. and do well in my career and in my life. And I, I owe them all, you know, a vote of gratitude and Wonderful. appreciation. Wonderful. Well, great. Uh, we, yeah, that's wonderful. Um, okay. Let's let's get into the World Trade Center. Let's let's get into your what you do. Uh, but let's start up a bit and and let's educate all of our viewers and, and all around. The, what does the World Trade Center do in Arkansas? And then let's just start there for a moment, and then let's dig in deeply of what you're doing for this great state. Okay. Well, in short, the World Trade Center supports the state of Arkansas in bilateral trade and exchange. So we have a contract through the AEDC, the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, to facilitate um, trade activity. So I work closely with the AEDC and a dotted line to the governor's office. We work with our legislators um, at the federal level about what we need to do to bring guests in and what, what they're working on and how we collaborate. So we work closely with everyone to try to facilitate the best possible opportunities for Arkansas companies. Mm-hmm. That is a, sometimes a heavy lift. Um, and it's a heavy lift primarily because there's a lot of moving parts and trying to keep up with all of that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of it's from, you know, years of experience and then what's in my head. Mm-hmm. So we've, we're trying to do better about what's in my head and getting it out on paper right. so other people can right. achieve the goals that we need to achieve. Um, the thing that I think is the most interesting about it is the diplomacy piece. Okay. With my job, there is a large amount of diplomacy. We speak to um, government officials from all over the world. We have conversations with them about trade opportunities. Mm-hmm. Sometimes public policy comes up into it, but I try to stay out of that lane because I'm not the one that can make those changes. We certainly can say, hey, we'd like to see this change or that mm-hmm. rule modified. Mm-hmm. Or within this agreement, we'd like to see this modification. But we don't have that influence, but we certainly can say, here's an opportunity for us to do something a little differently. That's a win-win for both parties. The other thing that's really interesting is, for example, we have dignitaries that come into the state. We host events for them. We introduce them to people. We have them meet with businesses. And it's really nice to be able to say, hey, I can call this embassy, speak with this ambassador's attache, and then they can get me through to the right person Mm -hmm. to help me through a barrier with customs, to help me through better understanding a rule and a regulation that I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. Or my order was rejected because I didn't have the right documentation. What Mm -hmm. is this document that I'm looking for? Mm -hmm. The movement of goods across borders Mm -hmm. can be very complicated and complex depending on the product that you're moving. Mm -hmm. And we try to mitigate the risk of that by having relationships abroad to make it easier for our businesses to move their product and or service. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that most people forget is that a service is considered an export. And when we first started talking, you mentioned the vendor community here in Northwest Arkansas Mm -hmm. specifically, that service that they provide is an export. Well, you know, we, you know, we did, we were talking about in Bentonville, Arkansas, you know, we, we have retail, Mm -hmm. uh, we have food, uh, you know, we have poultry, beef, all of that. Uh, we have trucking, Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have over 3000 Walmart Sam suppliers, uh, that have offices in this area. Mm -hmm. So all of that, complexity that we have in this little state this wonderful little state is 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 such an opportunity i'm sure for you to work with different countries so what are some of the countries uh that you can share with us today that you're that you're working with and and can and what you can share with products or services Mm -hmm. to your point can you talk about that and, and help us uh to educate all of us around this great work you're doing. Yeah. um, I always, I kind of make a joke because it comes in waves. So this month, 
And last month, um, Grace Space brought in a group from Canada, and they did a really good job with facilitating um, this this event around venture capital and around pitches, and we were able to participate with them on that. As a result of them doing that event, we worked with the consulate, and we'd been working with the consulate for years, but, you know, just not necessarily hit or miss, but not as strategic as I'd like to be because one of the things with trade and with what we do is you're constantly starting new relationships about every six to 18 months you're starting over mm. because post positions change, people move, there's a migration, there's a, somebody else is appointed. Mm -hmm. So we were in the process of just beginning to build this out again and coming back through. And I admit with the consult um, and my office a few mm. weeks before this event took place. So the timing was just perfect. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, we are going to do a trade mission to Canada. So right now there's a whole lot of movement around Canada because they're engaged with us. And again, it's cyclical. Mm -hmm. So we'll do a lot with Canada in 2024, but 2025, it kind of may fizzle out a little bit and another country may pop up. It just mm -hmm. kind of depends. Mm -hmm. We're also doing a lot with South Korea. We're doing more with them because there's a greater level of engagement for nearshoring, reshoring, mm -hmm. um, and it's bilateral. So it's foreign direct investment on both sides. There's opportunities for collaboration around tourism. Mm -hmm. There's lots of opportunities around conferences, trade shows, and things that they're doing in their country. And we take people there. They bring right. people to us. And it's right. really a good partnership. And those are the two that come to the, the top. Um, the third would probably be India. We are doing a lot more with India. We're finding that we're getting more inquiries about doing business in Arkansas, mm -hmm. wanting to partner. We have wonderful companies that are here, um, like Ethical Sourcing, that works with India specifically for manufacturing and manufacturing practices. Mm -hmm. So it's easy for us to make a phone call to one of our clients mm -hmm. that also has a business to say, hey, we're looking for a manufacturer in India that can do A, B, and C. Mm -hmm. to reshore that product there mm -hmm. to make it easier for those relationships. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's exciting. Um, what about Mexico? Are you Do you work with Mexico at all since they're close to us? Hey, we are working with Mexico. We're rebuilding those relationships. And again, rebuild doesn't mean something didn't happen. It just right. means it's all a big change. Right. And we're working through that change. Right. And we're also establishing new relationships with Chile. Mm -hmm. um, I had okay. part of my office went to a food show and they were able to meet with the Chilean embassy and meet with their people. So we're mm -hmm. already starting negotiations about mm -hmm. a potential trade show there. With Chile, there's opportunities with aerospace, food products, mm -hmm. as well as with Mexico, the same, and mm -hmm. as well as nearshoring or reshoring products into mm -hmm. that country. Um, the bilateral trade exchange opportunity works best with the USMCA, mm -hmm. and that is the free trade agreement that we have between Canada and Mexico. Mm -hmm. So our largest trade partners across the board are always going to be touch countries, okay. and Canada and Mexico are our largest partners. We do quite a bit in the Caribbean as well. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. Okay. I had no idea that you had, you know, there was so much going on in all, in all in the, these countries. Uh, and this is, this is awesome. Now, you know, one of the things um, that, that we mentioned briefly, but I want to go back to it since I have you here and, uh, and, I, and I know our, our guests are going to want us to do that. There's so much you have going on. There's so much I'm sure in the future that you're going to have going on. You know what we need to do sometime when you have guests in, or we have guests, we need to like bring them to, to the studio and let's let's share with our audience all the stuff that that you're working or some of these initiatives that you're working on. We would love to do that. I think that's okay. wonderful. I want Thank to do you that. so much for the opportunity. We'll definitely take okay. advantage of it. Good. I now, can think of a few things now. <laughs> okay. Good. Okay. Now, Denise, <clears throat> um, uh, as I was studying your bio and and talking to um, some mutual friends that we have mm -hmm. about you because I you know I have to like check you out a little bit and, uh, <laughs> in a good way no really uh, I know you're very passionate about things part I know you're very passionate about things mm -hmm. now we're gonna what we're gonna do we just we're gonna talk about you for a moment because this has been great what you said so tell us what you're passionate about what drives you now Okay, I have to, okay, you can't tell me, you can't do this. I have to say a quick story. Now, when I talked to Denise on the phone the very first time, 
She was chasing dogs, and uh, her husband left the gate open. I'm sorry, I'm calling you out on that one. And so, but anyway, uh, that was hilarious. She said, "Hey, dear, I'm 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 in the car. I've got to get these dogs up and all this stuff." You, it was so funny. Anyway, we won't have to go there. But uh, so, what 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 are your really? What drives you? What tell us? Talk to us about you for a moment, because uh, uh, as people uh, watch this and listen to you. People are going to want to know a bit about that because they're going to be so impressed with what you've done, uh, what you're going to do. You have a you, you have a huge responsibility in the state. So let's talk about that for a moment, okay? Well, um, what drives me is humanity. Um, I'm definitely a person that is heart centered and divinely inspired. Mm-hmm. Um, at a young age, I have always been aware of a presence that wasn't my own, that was mm-hmm. bigger than me, mm-hmm. that offered me a sense of peace, love, appreciation, and gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, I meditate all the time. Awesome. That's like my superpower. I tell everybody, if you want to meditate, let's do it together because your meditations will be so much better with me. <laughs> um, and I, I'm not modest about that because it's something that's really important. So I get up every morning between 4.30 and 5. I meditate for anywhere from... 45 minutes to an hour and a half right. yeah, on the weekends. If I could get three hours in, I know that sounds crazy, but just sitting in silence yeah. like that is just something that's ama- amazing for my life. And I would say that that's the thing that moves me the most. Mm-hmm. Um, I read a lot. Uh, I read a lot about a lot of different things. I have many interests. Mm-hmm. I make jewelry on the side and that's my happy place. Mm-hmm. I spend a lot of time with my family, enjoy the people in my house. Right. Those are truly my best friends. But yeah. those are the things that motivate me and move me to yeah. do what I do. And I like helping others. Mm-hmm. It makes me feel good mm-hmm. when my clients achieve the goals that they have. Mm-hmm. And we were able to help move them in a direction mm-hmm. that they wanted to go or open their eyes to new opportunities. Mm-hmm. I take it personal with mm-hmm. them. Mm-hmm. I feel like it's my business too. It's right. theirs and they have stewardship of it. Right. But if I don't give them my best and I don't give them the information that I have and the resources that I have to the mm-hmm. best of my ability, I'm not serving them very well. Mm-hmm. And I always want to do my best because I want everyone to give me their best. Right. And I have this thing that if I'm the best me that I can possibly be, my presence, my person, my business, the World Trade Center is not mine. It's mm. the states right. and all of the people in it. But I have stewardship over that. Right. But if I don't give that organization my best, I don't benefit anywhere, anyone. Right. So if I give my best, I benefit mm. everyone, everywhere, mm. all the time. Great. Even in the smallest little detail. Mm-hmm. And that makes the difference mm. for me. And that's from my heart. Mm. And that's daily I try. I fail sometimes because I'm human, but I always make the effort. Wow. You know, I thank you so much uh, because I, it's so important, you know, behind someone as successful as you are and, and the responsibility that you have in our state, uh, I know there's that drive and that commitment. And uh, so thank you for sharing that. Now, uh, let's let's thank you. I, thank you for I just felt we could talk about that for a moment. And I really appreciate that. that. That's awesome. Now, I appreciate you asking that question. Well, <laughs> you're um, it's hard to not it's hard to set across it's, uh, from you and not not receive that from you. Mm-hmm. You know, that genuine and that commitment that you have, because I see it. I, I hear it and what you're doing. And I knew other people would. Uh, would probably enjoy the hearing uh, what you share. So thank you for that. Um, now, as we begin to wrap up, if you will, I want to go back and let's talk business uh, a bit more. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the future. Okay. The future of the World Trade Center in Arkansas or just the future as as you see it mm-hmm. around um where, where are we going in this great state? I mean, you know, we know we are already the mountain bike capital of the world. Uh, mm-hmm. Of course, as a cyclist, I would say that, right? <laughs> you tell me, but, you know, there's so many wonderful things in our state that's happening in, in this great state of ours. And, and we, we're reading about it every day, the commitment that's, that's from the capital all the way down about, you know, trade um, and um, uh, all the commitment to at business in the state, uh, as you have 
this view. I mean, you're fortunate to have a view of this. Let's just talk about that. What do you What do you see? And and you can, you can share some of the obstacles too, if you like. What you know, as you see them. I see a wide open opportunity. And I say that because Arkansas really is an amazing place with amazing people. We're innovative, we're self-reliant, and we're drivers. As a state, as a whole, we really have the world at our feet. And it's our choice to say we're going to dive into the deep end of the pool and grab all of it and pull it into us Mm -hmm. and embrace it and then expand that. Mm -hmm. We can do this. I find that in our region in particular, we work well together. We're very collaborative. Mm-hmm. We want to see progress. We want to see things change. And you look at what's happened with the biking, right. or just as an example. I mean, a small idea became a mighty thing. Right. And as we grow, there's so many things that are on the horizons. So, for example, when I look at the narrative of what I see happening is I see that more and more people globally are saying, hey, Denise, AEDC, come and present. Come talk about what you're doing in Arkansas. We're sending videos to countries saying, hey, this is who we are. These are the types of businesses that we have. Mm -hmm. I see that the World Trade Centers are beginning to engage with us more. Mm -hmm. I see that we just did a presentation yesterday with um, several World Trade Centers about how we are funded, how we're structured, how Mm -hmm. we do business, and what we've been able to do with our clients. Mm -hmm. We have programs that they don't have. They have programs we don't have. Mm -hmm. So we work together. It's Mm -hmm. very collaborative. So I see that as a way for us to grow, Mm -hmm. expand. Mm -hmm. We're looking at trying to do, and this is a stretch goal, but we want to do four trade missions next year where we're going and taking companies elsewhere. Mm -hmm. We already have three on the books, and we're looking for that fourth. And I think that's going to emerge from something that's happening with South Korea. I do Mm -hmm. see that as a possibility Mm -hmm. of one for us for an Mm. export or import and bilateral trade opportunity. So we're looking at Canada. We always do Farnborough, which is an aerospace show. Our largest export in a product is Mm. aerospace and defense. So we do that show. We do that with the AEDC and the governor. And that's Mm. one of the bigger shows that we do and probably gives us the best numbers Mm -hmm. as far as results on the ROI, on the investment that people Mm -hmm. make into that show and to what they're able to pull out of it. Mm -hmm. The other show, I Canada aerospace food show in Miami. Um, The food show in Miami, we think is a great opportunity. So we're looking at building momentum with that and getting other partners throughout the state, larger corporations to engage in that Mm -hmm. because it is an opportunity for exports of large scale products Mm -hmm. as well as small products. Mm -hmm. We had one company go and it was a spice company and that spice company is yielding really good results. And I'll know more details Mm -hmm. next week. Mm -hmm. So you have to have me back so I can tell you what they did. Uh, Well, (laughs) we definitely have you back for sure. Right. So those are some yeah. of the big things. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Small details are important as well. I try to get out and network as much as possible to bring companies to us. So I'm trying to mm-hmm. commit to more opportunities where I'm out and about in the country or globally mm-hmm. and meeting with global partners. So there has been four companies that we've bought, b- brought back to Arkansas that I can't talk about just yet mm-hmm. that are looking at foreign direct investments through partnerships with um, various groups within our market, as well as the AEDC are working with them to help facilitate the best case mm-hmm. scenario for their market entry. Mm-hmm. And these types of things are something that we hadn't really done before. Mm-hmm. But now that I see that we have these opportunities in front of us and so much growth that creates jobs on our mm-hmm. on our soil, mm-hmm. it creates greater GDP for our marketplace which improves our schools, our roads, and it makes the quality of life of yes. every human being here better. Wonderful. Some of the projects that we're looking at is solutions to problems that we have, like housing shortage, mm-hmm. um, understanding how we can get higher wage jobs, mm-hmm. how we can do internships abroad, how mm-hmm. we can work with students that may not be college bound, but definitely have the skill set to do certain things. Sure. Can we bring more business and industry to help mm-hmm. support mm-hmm. our students our faculty and our 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 community as a whole. Mm-hmm. Wonderful, Denise. Um, thank you. That it's been such a wonderful conversation with you. And just a couple of things where we close out. Um, one is I want you to know that doing business in Bentonville is uh, a huge fan, and we want to help you and your organization all that we can. Thank you. Uh, we're committed to our community. We're committed to our state. 
as you know, doing business in Bentonville is, is about omni-channel and retail, but we're also very focused around our state and our community. And uh, so I want you to know, reach out to us. We're here. Uh, we're just down to, uh, we're just a few feet from your office. So come see us and uh, let's do more of this together. Let's, let's help share uh, all the work that your that the uh, Tr- World Trade Center is doing for our state and our country and, uh, and, and your involvement in the other countries too. Uh, so please come by. I will. Okay. So the last thing I have is to talk about, uh, I know that you're, that you're, you're really focused on education. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this big picture because, uh, talk about what you're really part of in the World Trade Center, how it fits under this wonderful part of education in our state. Well, I appreciate you helping, um, save the best for last. <laughs> Um, we are a part of the University of Arkansas, Fayetteville. Um, that is my parent company per, per se. Mm-hmm. And I work with the Vice Chancellor for Economic Development specifically, which is Mike Malone. Mm-hmm. Um, the leadership of the institution has been extremely supportive of the World Trade Center. And they hold the license to the World Trade Center. And that's a direct report to me. That's mm-hmm. who I report to. Mm-hmm. We work really hard to try to work with the institution for bringing dignitaries on campus. We work with students through internships. We work Mm. with those students to get them internships abroad, if at all possible. Wonderful. We're looking at opportunities right now with uh, students to get internships abroad. We work with the Rome Center, and Mm. most people don't know the University of Arkansas Fayetteville has a Rome Center, Mm -hmm. which is in Rome, Italy. We work with them. I go once, maybe twice a year to do workshops with them. I talk Mm. to their students, which gives us an opportunity to talk to other students because they have a Mm. huge demographics from different parts of the world that go to that program. Mm -hmm. Um, We look at opportunities for educational exchange. Mm -hmm. We look for opportunities for research for the institution. And that relationship has served us very well in helping us grow and be strategic about some of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. And because the World Trade Center is quasi-government, quasi-education, quasi-not-for-profit, quasi-business, we kind of float in this bubble Mm -hmm. of we don't have to work with any of the politics behind any of this we kind of are left in a place mm-hmm. where we can do what we do well mm-hmm. and that's grow business for the state mm-hmm. okay denise thomas wow what a great conversation uh it's so good to see you today and, and thank you for uh, coming on the podcast we really appreciate it. now if um how do we how do we like find you we want to like reach out to world trade center i know you're on linkedin but what's your website it's a r w t c dot o r g. Okay. And I always say this: when in doubt, Google World Trade Center Arkansas. <laughs> okay. And we come to the top. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you again. It's been wonderful spending time with you. Great visit uh, to all of our viewers and listeners. Thank you so much for joining us on Doing Business in Bentonville. You can check us out at dbbnwa.com. Check our website out and see all the latest uh, podcasts that we've posted, all these articles that that that's there retaining it that's that's all about omni-channel retail and now our community of course and so again thank you denise thank you for being here wonderful conversation with you thank you so much for having me i enjoyed being here okay thank you have a good day everyone thank you very much for joining